Welcome to this introductory series of training videos for SolidCamp. This video's topic is the cutoff operation. So the cutoff operation, or part off, allows you to uh, cut off the machined part from the remaining stock, the stock that's left in the jaws, the chuck, or the spindle. Um, so let's take a look at how we would get to that operation. So you'll go to your SolidCamp turning, and then from there you go to your cutoff. If you want to just add it immediately after a toolpath, what you can do is go to your toolpath tree, right click on any toolpath, and then when you add turning operation, you add an operation immediately after. In this case, I'm going to put my cutoff operation at the very end of my list just by right clicking on my last toolpath and then just adding from uh, turning operations. So the cutoff operation follows the same workflow as the standard turning operations, where you're just going to choose your geometry, choose your tool. You uh, take a look at your levels, and then you're going to put some main parameters in the technology section. So let's start by geometry. The geometry for the cutoff operation is literally just the back face. You can think of this almost like as doing it the same way as the face turning operation we covered in a previous video in this introductory series. Uh, all I'm going to do is choose a line from my target profile that represents the back face. It could be a sketch line, it could be another face completely, and I can add offsets to that. But we have to start with some sort of uh, piece of geometry in this window. So I'm just going to grab that one there, click the green check mark to accept the chain, and then click the green check mark to accept that geometry. If I need to, I can go and modify the geometry. Now, in my case, my OD turning already turned it to a proper diameter, but if I wanted to extend it past that diameter, I can add start extension of whatever I like. Let's say we add 100 thou there. But I'll put that back to zero because I've already turned that. And on the lower end, I actually have already drilled to that point, but I don't want it to uh, leave behind any burrs on this side. I want to probably go all the way down to that level there to account for the fact that I drilled to that point. So I can go to end extension and I can put in whatever extension I want there as well. I can pull it back. If I, if I have a piece of geometry that doesn't represent that, uh, that proper uh, face, or I can put in a plus in there of positive value. Positive value will extend it past that point. So in this case, I'll just extend it past the, uh, the drilled hole there. So click the green check mark, and our geometry has been modified. We'll go to Tool, select the tool, and I'm just going to select my grooving tool. My grooving tool, my part off tool. Again, uh, you, you define the turning tools in that toolkit. On how to do turning tools in the toolkit, I would refer you to the creating turning tools in this uh, introductory series video. Let's go to levels. Levels, really the levels, all you're doing here is just confirming the safety distance that the tool is going to take as it travels along the part. This will be safety distance from the updated stock, from the target profile itself. This is just where it retracts to uh, to keep away from colliding with the part. It's in the technology section where we're going to see the main control over this toolpath, the main parameters of this toolpath. Uh, and in this case, there are two modes, outside and inside, long, internal, and external. Uh, so essentially, this is just the same operation, just in different directions. The tool side refers to, if we take a look at it from the point of view of the part, in this turning view, tool side left, I'm on the left side of the chain that I selected. I could be on the right side of the chain I selected, or maybe that's a sketch line that represents the center point of my operation. So I can go down the middle. That line can represent the middle of my operation. So again, this could be a sketch line. This could be a, another face completely, and you're offsetting from there. Lots of different operations in here, lots of different uh, functions that you can do. In this case, my line represents the actual face that I'm looking to uh, cut to, and I want to be on the left side of that line. This being a type of grooving operation, albeit a grooving operation that goes right down to zero, uh, you have the same sort of grooving controls that we saw in the grooving operation video, where you can do either a single cutoff, where it'll just progressively go down until the part is cut off, or we can go with constant and add a little bit of a step with each one. Once you choose the constant, it actually opens up the release distance. So with each uh, movement in, in this case, the 40 thou, we can tell it where we'd like it to retreat to, the retreat distance away from each cut either on the inside or the outside. Let's put this back to single. After the actual cut itself, we can add a little bit of a retract in whatever direction we like. So 
there's our retreat distance. We can either retreat in the negative Z direction or in the positive Z direction, depending on what we want to do with our tool. We are doing a cutoff, but this will be our last chance to leave material behind on that face if we're planning on doing any kind of facing on subspindle or if we're taking the part, flipping it around and putting it back in the vise. So before we let it go, we might want to leave some material on that Z face. So again, this is a Z offset. A positive number will add material onto the face. So if I put 10 thou on here, I'm actually leaving 10 thou material on that face there. The corner option, again, with the idea that this is the last time we'll be working on this part before we part off, I might want to add a chamfer on the top. Now, the chamfer could be just for edge breaking, or it could actually be a feature that you're looking to mill on your part, turn on your part. So corner allows me to tell it either to put a chamfer on that corner, and as soon as you see, uh, you see as soon as I choose chamfer, it gives me chamfering parameters, or fill it, and I can put a radius. So let's say I'm putting a chamfer. Let's go with the chamfer that is 5 thou, 45 degrees. The location of the chamfer is the other thing we have control over. So chamfer on the left means that the remaining stock in the spindle will get the chamfer. I will do a chamfer and then I will do a part off. If I say on the right, that I'm actually putting a chamfer on the piece before it parts off. Again, it'll actually do a little bit of a groove, chamfer that edge, and then part off the part. Or I can do both. So it'll actually do a little bit of a groove, chamfer both sides, and then part off the tool. So we can take a look at that in the simulation. In the link section, again, right safety corner is gonna be that safety distance in both X and Z away from the part over here. And in this case, you might be parting off maybe a long tool, or you don't want to go from here wrapping over there. So you have the ability in the approach point to change it to whatever you like. In this case, I can change it to X first, and then I can just pick a point. Maybe I'll just pick this point right here to get that particular location, and then maybe I'll just increase my approach point in the diameter direction. So let's save and calculate. You can see that I'm actually generating code that does a little bit of a chamfer and then does the part off, the cutoff. So let's take a look at that in our simulation. We'll go to the turning simulation. You can see that the part is fully done. Now you'll also notice, if I just take a step through here, that I have my jaws holding just a little bit of stock. Now this could actually be a, a piece of long bar stock in a bar feeder or, or whatnot. Um, the recommendation would be to not define the entire length of the bar stock, only because you don't want to have this big chunk of material here that is left over. All you need to do is add just enough material for the toolpath to generate. That way, if you're doing a part off and then working on the second side, SolidCam doesn't think that you have this big lug of material still floating in space. So it's a good idea to just make sure you define just enough material for your operations. So if I step through this code, we'll see that it comes down and it does a little bit of a chamfer on both sides. Now, in this case, it was a 5 thou chamfer, so it's pretty low, pretty small. But if we take a look at it, it's actually chamfering the material before it does the part off. If I zoom out here, we can see that after the part off, it removes the material, and it left that 10 thou on that face there. So the cutoff operation allows you to separate the stock and then your, your, your simulated stock will know that there's only a certain amount of material left on that face. The part has been part off. It is now separated from the main spindle. You can now do your part transfers to your subspindle. You can uh, define the part as coming in from the other direction for um, second side turning on the main spindle. Whatever your setup is, once you've do, done the cutoff, it separates the stock and it only looks at the remaining stock around the target. Any questions of this or anything else from SolidCam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. And uh, stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.